Go ahead. Yeah, Coach, a couple of um, uh, depth chart uh, questions. Uh, Keith moving to tight end. Uh, that was the only one that really jumped out. That well, day. couldn't put 12 guys on there. Um, no, I mean, it's not. I mean, he's kind of – he can play on multiple right. spots for us. So, it just, just made a little more sense just to put him in that spot. Keith's got to have a big role. He'll play multiple roles for us. But it was no uh, – Big time change, other than we just put the depth chart out with 12 personnel. And uh, also, um, they did their captains. What's your captain philosophy? I know yeah, we voted on it. it. Yeah, no, we voted on it uh, this morning. Um, and I'm going to let the, the players do it. I've been around it where, uh, you know, you vote, and then the, the, the head coach then decides who he wants. Um, and I don't think you get an authentic picture of it. Uh, we'll release our capacity and his crew. They're, they're, can't wait to put the social media video out. So um, I'm going to give it to Bassey here in a minute, but we'll release it this afternoon. But they voted this morning. Josh, forgive me if you've covered this in depth already. How much did you know Matt prior to the hiring process here? How much time did y'all? No, I didn't know Matt. I knew of Matt, obviously. Um, you know, Mike Malarkey, I worked for Mike in Tennessee. Mike was Matt's first offensive coordinator here in Atlanta. Uh, obviously, Matt's, you know, I'm not that much older than Matt. I know I look a lot older. Um, he's in a lot better shape, and he's not as great. So, but we actually, ironically played against each other in college. And he's a couple years younger than me, so I knew a lot of the same people from Boston College and his newest reputation over the years, but I didn't know him until we got started here. Did y'all get together somewhere to just talk ball for an hour or two early in the process? How did you go about it? Not through the it? hiring process, no. Uh, after I took the job, yeah, I reached out to a lot of the, the veterans, and we had some great conversations. Matt has convinced you a scheme, a route, something that he's made you see differently. Kind of what have you learned from him in this? Well, I learned from, from all of our players and coaches. Uh, you know, you stop learning, you stop growing, uh, you're done, in my opinion. And it doesn't matter how long I coach, that's just my general philosophy on life. Um, we have conversations all the time. With, you know, Matt and I, uh, Dave Ragone, Charles London. I mean, we got a really, a really good staff, guys with a lot of diverse backgrounds. And so, there's a lot of good ideas out there, and then once we decide to do something, we go with it, but it's got to make sense for us. Uh, but that's any player. I always hear the, guy, uh, the guys out, and then ultimately we've got to make a decision that best suits us. Staying on the topic of Matt, what are some of the indicators that kind of show you that you and Matt are in sync in the way that you need to be to start the season? Well, it's the way we operate at practice. I mean, there's got to be a lot of trust. You put the play call in. It's my job, obviously, to get the call in there clear, get in there quick so we're not low on the shot clock, and then just watching him operate. And you can just tell by the decision making, you know, the why. The why is big to me. And a lot of things when we're talking about plays, here's why we're doing this, here's why I called this. Uh, and those are conversations we have uh, multiple times a day throughout the week. Uh, but you could see it in sync just what, by his decision making, how he sees a play, how I see it. Because, again, it's how I see it, and ultimately, the game's played by the guys out in the field, and, and it looks a little bit different than it does when you pause the film or you're on a grease board, you know, you don't forget that how it's played through a helmet. And so that's kind of, I just measure that. Kind of switching gears a little bit, I'm working on something about Mike Davis and going back to this offseason when y'all are out looking for a running back to bring in here, what kind of put him on your radar? Again, uh, with a lot of the free agents, there have been coaches on our staff that worked with them before. I think that helps a lot. There's a lot of unknown in free agency, so you better have somebody you trust that's worked with them. So that's the first. Uh, it's not everything. I mean, at some point you got to fill out a roster. I get that, but we had pretty good familiarity with Mike, the person he was, and then the player. You know, you're watching the film stylistically. I think the guy's very productive. He's a physical running back. Uh, he can protect. He's got pretty good hands coming out of the backfield. I mean, all the things that that we value, I saw on film with him. What kind of things, uh, what kind of challenges does Jalen Hurts present? He presents a lot of challenges. Um, you know, I see why they like him in Philly. Uh, you know, he was well known coming out. You know, he, he produced in big games. You know, he played at two of the bigger programs in the country and had success, success at both of them. I know he's highly competitive. He's, he's got a strong arm. He's got courage in the pocket. And, you know, we, we got a work cut out for him because he can, he can extend plays, but he's got, a, he's got a live arm and he's tough. This is always going to be a big week for unscouted looks. Do you go back at all to what he did in the last, I guess it was three or four games last year, or do you just, you know, not yeah. one blind? Well, there's, there's a lot of ways. I mean, yeah, yeah, you take into account there's 
sometimes I said the opener, it feels like a bowl game. Well, you, you can almost talk yourself out of things if you, you just kind of rewatch over and over. You know, you're watching his last year play. You're watching stuff from, you know, right, what did Nick do here? What did Shane do you know, there? I mean, you, and it's the same thing back and forth. There's a lot of unknown in week one, especially you have two new staffs. Uh, but, the, you know, with Jalen, you know, what he's been successful with, and, and they'll have a good plan. And they've done a hell of a job. Uh, you can see the, the improvement, the progress, all the things that Nick's been talking about. You, you can actually, you can see it, uh, and just watching him. I know he didn't play a ton in the preseason, but just you can feel it. Michael, what, so what was you know coaches always scout basically everybody coming out, right? Mm-hmm. What was your scouting report on Jalen? Well, you know, you know, you peaked the uh, quarterbacks of the draft. Um, you know, we weren't really anticipating taking one high that year. But as a guy, he, he's a winner. I think it's well noted, you know, how hard he works. I think that was his reputation, you know. The, to me, again, I don't know Jalen. I'm just, you know, as a as a fan watching him and and watching guys that are that are good football players. The guy found a way to win. He found a way to win at Alabama when he, you know, when he was a starter and he had to come in in big moments and then obviously at Oklahoma. So, got a ton of respect for him. I feel like I've asked you this question so far every step of the way. So just keep going with it. Like for you, what have you given thought to what Sunday is going to be when it's like actual first one that counts and sure. they run out? Like, what's that going to be like for you? Well, it's just my mindset. I mean, I'm not going to get. I try to stay neutral. You know, it's a football game, and it's it's so competitive in the NFL. You know, I'm sure I'm in a different role, but the ball's kicked. I mean, we 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 got to find every way we can to win this football game, and there's things that will. We'll lean on, and I'm not going to sit here and talk about the, the game plan and the strategy, but once the ball is kicked, like, there's no sentimental value because it's the first game, and we've we got to do whatever we can to win that football game. You were obviously going to be playing as Matt in college. Did you actually play in that one game? That, the bowl game, no, the regular season game, yes. Um, so he came in, too. He didn't start that game, I believe. I think I think he came in the bowl game, but it, definitely the one we got him, the one that counted – was the next year when they came into Chapel Hill, they were ranked, and we knocked them off. So I, I, I've reminded them of that a couple of times. Awesome. So uh, going kind of off of his question, the kind of the battle of first-year coaches between you and Nick, does it give you any, I don't know, feel better going against a coach that doesn't have as much experience as the first-year head coach, or does it help at all? No. I mean, the, Nick's been around the NFL. He's been in, uh, he's a hell of a coach. His players, I mean, like, he talks about fundamentals, and it shows up. It's not just lip service. Wherever Nick's coached, especially at the wideout position, you see those guys improve. Um, we got a familiarity from Indy, but obviously it was Frank Reich and Mike Rabel, the head coaches, but both of us were the coordinators. But when the ball is kicked, uh, Nick and I aren't playing, so I'm not blocking anybody, and he's not running any routes. So, you know, it's about the players and making sure and both teams will be prepared. There's no doubt about it, uh, especially Philly. they got a ton of respect for their staff. What's your I guess, expectation of a learning curve? Because obviously there's going to be a learning curve going into the first game. And Matt's talked about even just trying to understand the dialect between you and play calling. So what do you expect this first game kind of to be like for you? Well, I expect it to go very efficient between Matt and I. Uh, you know, I think any season, obviously, you know, it helps. You know, when you get into, into multiple games, uh, just going back to my history with Ryan, sure, certainly, you know, year two is easier than year one because you've been through a couple games. But I expect it to be efficient. I expect the communication uh, to be pretty clear, going back and forth in between the series. It's not Matt's first rodeo. So, like I said, I, I expect him to play well Sunday. Jeff, following up a couple of earlier questions. In the preseason, I don't think you were ever asked this, did it feel different for you out there as the head coach in the preseason? And is there anything that you take from those games as you go into the first game? Before? Yeah, I mean, everything's a learning process. You know, I felt that every game that, I was a tight end coach or a coordinator, and then obviously the role is a little bit different. The head coach, if you're going to call the plays from the field, you got to have trust. You got your staff that people have jobs to do when there's good communication. It certainly felt more natural. You know, the preseason, there's just a different feel to it. Um, obviously, it was the first time going to the head coach, but there's just a different. There's nothing like when the regular season starts, and then you know, hopefully, when you're playing in the playoffs, it's even a. You can just feel it. You can feel it. Uh, obviously, the players are out there, but there's a different intensity level. And uh, yeah, it definitely felt more comfortable through game three, just our communication and our process from the sideline. And, and then we talked about Matt and, and you know, not playing the preseason. Obviously, a lot of guys either, either didn't play or played very little. Do 
Do you, what's your comfort level right now in terms of just how in sync the offense is going into game one? Well, you know, just going back to the precinct, I, I, again, there's a lot of different philosophies, a lot of guys that are successful. Uh, you know, you go back and, and look at some of Coach Gibbs' team in the preseason. I don't think that's really what you saw. I don't, I don't think you go back, look at our 19th season in Tennessee, you know, how you mix and match. It certainly wasn't the team that it was in the middle of the season. Different cast of, you know, different cast of characters out there. Uh, how the season's evolved. They take on lives of their own. Uh, like I said, there's guys that that's the beautiful thing about the NFL. And you get in this spot, and there's 32 different flavors. I've never thought you carried momentum from the preseason into it. They're just different. And you're seeing less and less uh, game plan plays from teams. That, that's what I observed in the, in the preseason. You saw everybody's kind of core stuff, guys have different philosophies, but I didn't, other than a few, you know, like a schemed up plays, you saw a couple highlights for this and that, for this player or that. You saw a lot of basic football with a lot of different guys. So I, I think they're completely different entities. Certainly, if we don't come out and play well, that's an easy narrative to grab onto. Uh, but whether we played 70 snaps, we don't play well week one, there's an issue no matter what. So uh, we got to continue to improve. No matter how we play Sunday, the, the objective is you have to improve. Whether you start, we've all been a part of this, whether you start 6-0, and uh, I was a part of a team that started 6-2, and finished 8-8, eight and eight, missed the playoffs. Obviously been a part of a team that went 2-4. and four. You get better as the season one, you make a run to the, to the AFC Championship game. So. Like I said, every season is a life of its own, and we have to improve. We got to be ready to go Sunday, and then once Sunday's over, we got to continue to evolve and improve. Jarvis, hey, Coach, what did you see from Caleb and Gary to make you say in your mind that hey, this is going to be our guy for the right at the right type of position going forward? Well, uh, one thing is he wasn't healthy starting out, and we felt that we needed to push Caleb, and really certainly felt like that's why he played more snaps. You know, he missed the off season, and it's not like we were out there going full metal jacket scrimmage in the spring, but there's a lot of reps individually. And really, when you can't run spring, you're going to be a little farther behind. And so uh, he worked really hard, and we were able to get him back sooner than probably I anticipated. It's a credit to him and just working him in the football shape. And then he had to compete for, the, for that job. And it's the same thing. We'll, we'll make evaluations every week how he's doing, but uh, he's improved. Feel like he's gotten into into football shape, and he went out there and won that job. And coach, you talk about the roles and everything. As far as like, how have you prepared yourself to be able to go from, okay, I'm calling plays. Now I got to figure out whether or not I need to call a timeout or or that sure. kind of situation. Yeah, situation from the standpoint. Are you yeah, we we discuss it uh, almost daily with certain guys on our staff that we go through that, and that that was part of the preseason. To, to Jeff, to your question, like those are some of the. Again, it's not the pressure of it. You feel a little bit of the reason you're playing house money. They didn't really see anybody once I kick things or get in the four minute, you know, like they maybe would have used the timeouts in a four minute situation. Uh, but yeah, those are all factors. And but you have to have great communication and trust. Everybody's got a job to do, and you have to be aware of what's going on in the game. Yeah, uh, coming in as a, as a new coach into a new situation, what, what were the benefits that you found? Having a quarterback with Matt's experience and his, I just he's been here forever. Right. Like. Yeah. No. It's it certainly helps. You're able to to put things in probably quicker. I, uh, you know, had a pretty good uh, educated guess that he could handle most things because he's he's done a lot of things in this league and, and that that helps when you're when you're putting in an offense. Um, like I said, if if he wasn't where he, he was in his career, then certainly that would have affected whether we needed to play him or not in the preseason. But we got a lot of faith in Matt, and it certainly helps you put in things probably at a quicker pace. Knowing he can handle it, he's ultimately the one driving the, the boat out there. So, And uh, have you given much thought to, I guess, the kind of sideline personality you'll have as a head coach? Are you going to be a, a fiery guy, uh, or are you free measure? I'm just going to be myself. I like to think I'd be, I mean, that's how, that's how I've been as a play caller. Um, you know, certainly there's things that, yeah, you just be yourself. That, that's the only that's the only thing I ever try to do. I don't try to emulate anybody. Um, so, you know, I'm not gonna sit there and try to imitate Braves. Um, you know, I'm not gonna sit there and all of a sudden put on a big visor and start throwing that around either. So, I'm just gonna be myself. Maria, 
going back to some previous stuff, um, you know, given the fact that these are two new staffs, you and Philadelphia, does it feel a little bit like a catch-22 because you don't necessarily know what the Eagles are going to look like, but they don't either with you guys? Yeah, and that's where, you know, you have to trust what you've been, you've been working on and emphasizing to try not to reinvent for week one. I mean, we planned this whole thing out in the spring and, you know, who we want to be offensively and what we've been working on, and it'll evolve as a season and obviously working your personnel, and that, that even evolves, you know, as, as you get more familiar with your team, and that'll be the same thing in 22. Um, there is unfamiliarity, but personality-wise, I, I think Nick, John Gannon, I mean, they kind of have a feel, and I have a feel for, for both those guys. So if there's anybody, probably we both lucked out on who we're playing week one. Like I said, we were in that division together, Nick and I were in the AFC South, and John was in there too, John Gannon. So um, they'll have, like I said, it's a, real, it's a staff full of really good coaches. It's a really well-built roster. That, to me, they got two of the better lines in football. I know they've been banged up, but that, that's a really well-built roster, in my opinion, especially up front. I'm not focused. Like I said, I try to stay in the present. You obviously plan out what's coming Sunday, but I'm, it's not like I'm going to get geeked up today. No, Sunday at one o'clock, and I don't. I won't be geeked up losing my mind Sunday at one either. But it's just it's a focus on today to make sure we prepare, we put in the plan, and make sure at practice uh, you try not to overreact and make sure the guys understand the plan and, and make sure you're ready to go by Sunday. Michael, you mentioned that. McGarry came back sooner than you initially thought. Was that my understanding? Mm -hmm. well, 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 I guess when did you initially thought you get him back? Do you think you get him back by now, or was there? Yeah, but, question? But, but the same thing with Calvin. You know, we we got more practice out of him that I initially anticipated, which is a bonus for to me for both of them, help him get in get in, in my, my football shape. Josh, clearly you don't like the schedule. If you did, would you have eased your offensive line in a little easier? That's a, that's a heck of an assumption saying I don't like the schedule. What, what did I not like about it? No, I said you don't make the schedule. Oh, they said didn't but, like the schedule. Well, Sorry, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you made the schedule, would you ease your offensive line in a little easier, or are you just as glad to see this Eagles group to see what you've got on the offensive line? And you know right away. You're talking about terms of who, who we're playing? Yeah. Uh, it's going to be a challenge every week. Uh, that's to discredit theirs. And like I said, that we're, we'll have our challenge, not to get too far ahead, but Tampa's got a pretty good defensive line. Uh, you know, New York is going to – all of these guys. It's the NFL. Everybody's pretty damn good. Um, it'll be a challenge. Washington as well. I mean, it's – so you just focus on this week. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't anticipate there would ever be an easy game in the NFL, and that's been proven year after year. Uh, regardless of how cliche it is, any given Sunday, that's been proven over and over and over again. Um, it's always a challenge. I apologize. I thought you said I didn't like it. I don't want to get trouble. <laughs> I don't want to get in trouble with the league. I don't want, you know, Rich McKay's here, so I don't want to get in trouble. How does your game day routine now look different compared to when you were an OC now to a head coach? Like, what, is, what are some of the biggest differences now in game day for you? Well, I'm uh, not a superstitious guy. I mean, it's the same preparation. You know, we're kicking off at 1 o'clock Eastern instead of noon Central. I've got a process that I go through in the morning, how I like to get ready to go to call a game. Then, obviously, you're, you're right, there are new responsibilities. Make sure the inactives are in, they're correct. So there's no pressure on Bassity. Uh, but you know, it's getting the whole team ready. Certainly your mind's focused on all on the, the entire active roster. And you can't just be, you know, obviously got to get myself ready to call a game, but you're also worried about the whole team. Are your kids old enough to realize that their dad's getting ready to coach their NFL game? Are they excited for you or say anything to you? Um, a little bit. You know, uh, my kids, uh, Tanner's eight. Sophie six, and then Big Liam's almost two, uh, you know. So you know, Sophie and Tanner, they start to realize a little bit, but they, they still, it, it's kind of nice. They're still kids, and they're gonna have an innocence to it. And it probably helps their last name is Smith. So you make a poor call, maybe somebody's not yelling something at, at school. Do you live off of Jeff? Yeah, the first injury report comes out today. Then we need to be on alert for that. Oh, you've been waiting for this one. <laughs> it shouldn't be too much on there. Nah, it shouldn't be too much. <laughs> and uh, then um, I talked to Tony uh, yesterday because I was, he said, I want to see if you concur with it. He thinks Pitts is going to be okay because, you know, the hitting isn't like it used to be. 
not as much blocking, and then that Matt knows how to use a tight end. And those are three reasons why like, he thinks, you know, Pitts is going to, you know, because the stats are like, hey, rookie tight end struggle. But Jeremy Shockey was the last one that kind of get close to 1,010 Cleveland. And then you got to go all the way back to Dicker. So, uh, but, um, but Tony says, hey, he thinks he's going to be fine. Uh, thanks, Tony. I, I know, <laughs> and I know Tony. And Tony's obviously one of the best ones to ever do it. Um, but again, uh, you know, Tony's a very different player than Kyle. Uh, and like I said, Tony's one of the better ones to ever do it. So, you know, Kyle will play multiple roles for us. And then his progress, like I said, it, it's not to overreact. We got to win this, find a way to win this football game. He should be a part of it. But again, if they do a nice job or, he, you know, they take him away. We gotta. We have to find a way to win this game, and it's not about just patting stats. So we look like, hey, we got our we got our butt kicked. But hey, look look at the stats. Look at our draft pick stats. We got We got We got to improve. And we got to win. And ultimately, by the end of the season, we then we'll see where he, where he's at. What kind of impact did he help us win? You know, if he has 70 catches and, and we lose a bunch of games and blowouts, who cares? It's like being a, a high volume scorer on a bad basketball team. So. Again, I'll reserve judgment till the end of this year, and hopefully Kyle has a long year. Um, and then nothing Tony said was wrong, and I got all the respect in the world for Tony, but I, I, don't, I don't view Kyle as the same player as Tony Gonzalez. No, I don't view Kyle Pitts as the same player as Delaney Walker. I don't view him as the same player as Dallas Goddard or Zach Hurts or Travis Kelsey. He's Kyle Pitts, and so we need to bring him along the right way as a rookie. And with Jeff Schultz, I know you don't want to make this about you, but how much family is going to be a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I told Mr. Blank and Rich when they hired me, at least they sold a lot of tickets. And they're going to make family. And they'll be here Sunday. Parents. They're excited. Parents. Yeah, I mean, I think there's about 40 people coming, give or take. And 90% of them is my family. So it's hard to get. Um, but fortunate, you know, they, they, they all got tickets. To, they'll be ready to roll. Appreciate it, guys. All right, all right thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.